I start off by taping down the painting to a masonite panel. I'm using frog tape here, which is a really low stick tape. I put it into the painting and give it a nice straight edge. And then on the back of the masonite, I tape it down nice and flat and stern and strong so that the tape won't pull off later. It is a low stick tape, so it does still have a tendency to pull off. Once you have the first side down, you just proceed around it and tape the next side and vice versa. And as you can see here, you just go along and give it a nice straight edge across, smooth it down, again, just tear it off at the end, flip those ends over, and then fold down along the back. Once you have all the green tape down, then I go to the scotch tape, which is another low stick, but it's a little more sticky than the green frog tape. And leaving about oh, a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch of distance between the blue and the green, I go ahead and do the same thing with the scotch tape. Taping it down, nice straight edge, folding it down, folding it over, making sure it's good and solid on the back of the masonite and on the front. And again, this is just the same process as the green tape. You proceed forward with uh, doing each side independently. Again, I make sure that the back of the tape is down flat on the masonite panel. Uh, both sides are smooth on masonite anymore. They used to be rough, but since they're both smooth, it's easy to get it flattened on both sides. And again, leaving that little edge of the green tape showing, I make sure all the tape is sealed down tightly by running my finger on it on the, on the edge uh, against the paper. Once that's done, I go ahead and make a cutout of the building. You see me kind of marking it off here and drawing some lines. I'm keeping the cutout of the building back about a quarter of an inch from the edge of the line drawing itself that's on the paper. That gives me a form to put down on the paper so that I can then go ahead and proceed to mask around it. It saves a lot of masking by doing that. This is a heavier grade paper. And you can see it's just, just simply scrap paper. Once the paper is down, then I again go back to my uh, scotch tape. And I start using little torn pieces of it, as square as I can tear them. And tape down the uh, paper cutout around the edge being careful to leave some area to paint masking fluid on later. I'm going to paint masking fluid up to the edge of the line drawing and back over the paper so that no paint can get in under it or under the tape either one. Tape even though it's down on the paper tends to have the ability to go ahead and let paint run under it so you really have to kind of reinforce the idea of no, nothing running under it by uh, putting masking and frisket up against the tape as well as the cutout paper. The paper can't be tissue paper or newsprint because if you use it it'll, it's too uh, pliable and too easily soaked into by the frisket and it may not actually seal the edge. As 
you see I'm now getting the uh, scotch tape down all the way around so that the cutout is flat against the paper and that allows me to go ahead and proceed by putting some masking fluid on and I apply it liberally I'm using a sculpting tool and I I found those are easier to use than anything and very easy to clean because they're metal but I do apply it quite liberally and make sure that there's about um, three-eighths to half an inch of masking fluid around along the edge to keep uh, the edge clean I, I do take some care along the pencil edge to make sure that the line is neat and clean or rough or whatever I want to do with it it's going to give me a clean edge later when I peel this all off rather than bore you with all the details of going around I'm going to go ahead and show you just a little bit more of putting the masking on which I'm quite sure you can do and then I get me a, a mixing brush and I have a bar of Dove soap attached to a old pickle jar lid I take that and I use it as a device to put soap into my brushes that I can spatter some of the the uh, masking fluid onto the painting as well be careful where you place the masking fluid if it gets in clothing or it gets in uh, carpeting it will not come out so you got to be kind of careful where you put it but you can see how I'm just drizzling this on okay you can see I'm just dropping it here and there trying to put bigger drops down toward the bottom and the finer drops at the top this is going to allow some little bit of white space later little little blotches of negative negative space within the painting after I start painting it that will give me some ability to highlight some things if I don't like what's there after I'm done well then I can take it up and Here's what the finished masking product looks like. It's ready to paint.